Mott Hall 3, MS-128, the Bronx. We want to welcome Middle School 128 from the Bronx here, watching Democracy Now! And that music was Marcel Khalifi. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. While the United States remains heavily involved in Libya, it's been notably silent on other uprisings in the region. We turn now to Yemen and Bahrain, where protests continue amid a far-reaching crackdown. Yesterday, in southern Yemen, anti-government protesters raided government buildings, killing three people, wounding a dozen, according to security officials. Meanwhile, Yemen's president, Ali Abdullah Saleh, remains in Saudi Arabia for medical treatment. In his absence, the CIA is building a secret air base at an undisclosed location in the Middle East that will serve as a launching pad for armed drone strikes targeting al-Qaeda militants in Yemen. In Bahrain, trials of 48 medical professionals accused of attempting to topple the monarchy began this week. Yesterday, three women were arrested as they tried to stage a sit-in at a United Nations office. Throughout their seven hours in captivity, they managed to hold on to their phones and access social media outlets. One of the protesters, Zineb Akawaja, tweeted, quote, think the U.N. might have misunderstood. We wanted the release of political prisoners, not to join them. Zineb had previously launched a hunger strike to demand the release of her father, a noted human rights activist and political protester in Bahrain. We have had Zineb on Democracy Now! Both Bahrain and Yemen are close allies of Saudi Arabia. In March, Bahrain called in Saudi troops to help crush the pro-democracy protests. On Tuesday, the award-winning Middle East correspondent Robert Fisk of The Independent of Britain wrote, Bahrain is no longer the kingdom of the Khalifas. It has become a Saudi uh, palatinate, a confederated province of Saudi Arabia. Arabia, a pocket-sized weasel state from which all journalists should in future use the dateline Manama occupied Bahrain. Well, yesterday, news broke that Bahrain hired the British-based legal firm to sue the independent newspaper, accusing it of, quote, orchestrating a defamatory and premeditated media campaign against the Gulf state and neighboring Saudi Arabia. To talk more about this controversy and the role of Saudi Arabia in trying to quell these uprisings in the Middle East, we turn to Toby Jones, assistant professor of history at Rutgers University. Welcome to Democracy Now! Talk about Saudi Arabia and its power right now. First, its attempt to um, uh, sue Robert Fisk and the Independent for what he said. Well, the Bahraini regime thinks it's, ha you know, it's acting as though it has a, a public relations problem. It's ignoring the political crisis that's going on in the kingdom. But this is the way the El Khalifa typically respond to criticism uh, from, from outside, from abroad, and that is to uh, attempt to defame those who are uh, speaking truth to power and to undermine the credibility of experts and observers and journalists um, who would like to uh, bring light to the, you know, the, the extensive abuse and crackdown uh, and cruelty that's being carried out uh, by the ruling family. And talk about the role of Saudi Arabia in Bahrain. I mean, now all these doctors and nurses are on trial for giving medical assistance um, to actually all sides of the conflict, but they're saying they're aiding the protesters. Uh, Saudi Arabia working with the United States and the CIA drone attack using uh, Yemen as a launching pad for that. Saudi Arabia has two big uh, sort of priorities in the region. One is to preserve the political status quo. It's threatened by the possibility of democracy more generally and the empowerment of citizens and subjects. Um, secondly, it wants to preserve a political economy that, that, that bestows upon it considerable privilege. I mean, oil is an engine of incredible wealth in the Persian Gulf. The Saudis are the biggest uh, they benefit more directly than anybody else uh, and, and, and at a level that exceeds anybody else. So preserving that system uh, and preserving uh, kind of the rule of autocrats uh, explains why they went into Bahrain in the first place, uh, punishing Bahrainis and punishing those who have challenged the existing uh, the political status quo is also par for the course for the Saudis. Right? We're past the point where they feel a deep sense of anxiety. Now they're carrying out a vendetta, and the Bahrainis are all too willing um, to do their part against Shis in Bahrain, uh, and I'm sure the Saudis will look for allies um, elsewhere to do the same thing. But speaking of allies, how close is the United States to Saudi Arabia, and how would you describe describe what's happening in Saudi Arabia right now, what the government is, what the regime there is. Well, it's autocratic, uh, and it's uh, borderline tyrannical uh, in many ways. It uses a number of tools in order to sustain itself and keep itself in power. Uh, it has an, an incredible security apparatus. Its ability to use coercive power uh, is perhaps unparalleled in the region. This, and, and the bottom line, um, from the perspective of the United States, is that Saudi Arabia is and has been, if not our most important, our second most important ally in the Middle East. And we have made it a priority, uh, very clearly and most obviously, in President Obama's unwillingness to mention Saudi Saudi Arabia in his May 19th speech, uh, we've made it a priority to keeping the Saudis uh, in power and to remaining on their good side.
And the role of Saudi Arabia in all of these uprisings and um, the role of the United States ensuring a 